Howdy folks, TJ here. Gonna do another little fun reading of a brochure of myself stepping back in the day, 1980, picking up some brochures at the store, at your local five and dime, whoever was selling your particular computer of choice that you ended up maybe getting later on, and uh, reading through brochures that I took home before making the big purchase to say, why does TJ need to buy this particular thing? This one's gonna be a series on the Sinclair. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I recently have been doing a number of similar videos with the Atari. So this Atari brochure here covered the 400 and 800. So I went through 1980, me picking up this catalog at Macy's, which is a big department store here in the United States, probably worldwide in places. Although a lot of the department stores are kind of going down these days with the online sales becoming king, right? But anyway, back in those days, it was a lot of eye candy. You go to the store, and I remember seeing the Atari kiosk and seeing a 400 and an 800, and they had some free brochures. So that nice big old brochure I brought home with me and went, oh, I'm going to save my paper up money and buy an Atari 800, which is what I ended up doing. But... On a contender, a possible contender, on the different side of the spectrum in terms of, hey, I use the word spectrum, <laughs> on the different price range was this wee little lad. So we're going to start from scratch, 1980, and talk about the ZX80. Future video, I'm going to cover the Timex 1000, uh, which came out in 1982 here in the United States. I don't think I have any brochures on the actual ZX80. Um, uh, Pat, well, let's see. I, yeah, I don't have a ZX81 brochure, but I'm guessing it's very similar to this Timex stuff. Uh, and then I don't have anything on the Speccy other than a product catalog for software you could buy for it. Although I've got lots of magazines, maybe I'll come across something that I can do a similar series on so I can do it for ZX80, 81... Timex, and then uh, I don't think I have a brochure on the TS2068. Uh, that would have been a fun one to do, but I'll kind of do these series of videos as I come across brochures that I own. So immediately, let's talk about the ZX80. Now, we're stepping back in time, like I said, and I went to Macy's. Macy's didn't have no brochure on the ZX80. They had a brochure on this. So I had no clue about ZX80 other than reading computer magazines of the day and seeing this wee little computer that looked really space age and cool. That's the only reason that I even considered it for a little while and then once I saw a real Atari 800 in action, I knew this was mine. This is 10 times the price of this, though. In a whole different ballpark, right? But they were still computers. They were still 8-bit computers. Uh, why would I have chosen this one over this one? Uh, money would have been a big thing. And for some folks in different countries, uh, th these type of computers may have been really their only shot. Uh, because it would have been, you know, every country has their different... Uh, you know what money could do then and, and going through monetary issues for the country and gas and all that crap so this may have been or the ZX81 may have been or the Spectrum may have been your best choice here in the United States Commodore, Apple, Atari were the kings of the early uh, days of computing and then of course TRS-80, Radio Shack there's, there's options out there but Atari with power without the price is what I loved and fell in love with I don't think it was called Power Without the Price, though, back when I bought it. That was the Power Without the Price was a Tremel, or Tremel, Tremel, uh, thing later on. But I love the price of the Atari. They were cheaper than buying other brands. But this video is about the ZX80. Did TJ consider it? Yes. I remember distinctively seeing an advertisement in a magazine, and... I would have never found this unless it came with the ZX80 that I recently purchased. I don't remember any computer stores locally having anything Sinclair. None of that. So, And Timex Sinclair wasn't in the picture yet, right? They didn't come out until 1982-ish. So this was very... I don't know who sold them over here in the United States. Well, this company may have because this is a brochure from Image Computer Products, Inc. in Illinois. So they probably, in conjunction with Sinclair, put out this little catalog or booklet. 
I do not know if uh, Sinclair had their own generic brochures that they handed out over in England and all your places over there, or even in the United States. But needless to say, this is the one and only brochure that I have that kind of covered, hey TJ, do you want a ZX80? So let's look through this booklet. It's a small booklet, kind of the size of the current Crash Magazine that you can buy, very small. You can see my hand, it's a small booklet. Uh, again, a little bit different. Uh, everything bigger in the United States. Well, everything's bigger in Texas, as they say, but uh, yeah, everything, you know, is um, art. What's the, what's the word for it? I don't know what the word for it is. Uh, uh, I'll figure it out later. But uh, yeah, big book, little book. Big computer, the Atari 800 over here. Small computer, the ZX80. It's a little booklet, and it, and it says on the front, Sinclair ZX80, personal computer system, 1980. Computers, application programs, and accessories published and distributed by Image Products, Image Computer Products. So, yeah, and then on the back, it has a continuation. You'll see that this has got this little graphic here, and then it's kind of got a semi continuation of that on the back side and the back side just has their address image computer products inc so yeah it looks like immediately if i would have seen this at a store i would have said "Ooh, that looks nifty and tj does like and i was like speaking in third third person uh, i love little computers i dig them you know even though i fell in love with the big atari tank of a computer the 800 this looks sleek so let's open up the booklet together and i'm going to show you the first page before i see it what am I looking at? I don't know yet. <laughs> Does it look good? I'll hold it in a few different angles so you can see. And what did I see? Well, not much. A copyright notice. <laughs> Most computer programs have been submitted for protection under the same United States copyright laws that protect other types of publications. Uh, and it's published in 1980. Personal computer uh, computing Sinclair ZX80 style. So let's read a little of this. And it was signed by Dick... Ainsworth, creative director of Image Computer Products. So my guess is they, again, had some tie-in with Sinclair that over here in the United States they were one of, or the, I don't know, distributor? Uh, I don't know, but only a few years ago, computers as powerful as the ZX80 cost thousands of dollars. Ten years before that, only very large corporations, universities, or governments could even afford to have their own personal computer. So they're kind of harping on, okay, this is going to be a price thing, right? Uh, most of the computing power has been used in business to write the checks, print the bills, and count the money. Uh, these business machines are still very large and expensive, but they aren't any smarter than the computer you can hold in your hand today. In fact, much of the expense of these systems is in memories and other information storage. With the ZX80, so they're finally bringing ZX80 back into the loop, an audio tape recorder replaces the large tape and disk storage of business computers. While you won't be able to run a bank or control a space shot, what the hell's a space shot? Control a space shot. I've never heard that word. Uh, okay, uh, you will be able to store many smaller programs to help keep track of your money, figure your taxes, and even compute interest rates for your personal loan. So they're not talking much about games yet. They're all about um, business side of things, right? Business and financial calculations are only two of the many things you can do with your computer. In preparing this catalog, we considered hundreds of programs, including electronic games. Okay, they finally brought games into the picture. <clears throat> Video art, educational programs, graphic displays, and a wide variety of new applications. These programs are not only fun, they will help you understand computers and what they do. Like cooking, model building, and other hobbies, programming your own computer is a rewarding experience, which it is. I loved programming in the day, and I think that's one of the things that looped a lot of us young kids into learning, right? If you're really curious and would like to see how programs are written, the ZX80 is an ideal learning tool. Writing programs in BASIC is an easy skill to learn. Good programs like good stories or paintings uh, take time to develop. Whether you use your personal computer to play back other people's software or as a tool for creating your own, we hope you continue to discover what computers are interesting, challenging, and fun. So that's that first part. Uh, let's show you the next page before I see it. 
Is this any more interesting? So that first one was kind of like a, a little introduction, getting your juices ready for what's in store and what was in store. Oh, Sir Clive Sinclair, and then this Bill Moulds guy, which I have no idea who the hell that is, but Sinclair. So I'm not going to read this whole booklet, but I wanted to give you an introduction, and then we'll flip through pages. So this video will be long, but again, it's kind of, you came over my house, I picked up this uh, catalog, and we're looking at it together, and deciding if we need a ZX80 in our lives. Sinclair Research Limited. So this picture right off the bat shows a smiling, you know, you always didn't see Sir Clive smiling that much. This one, he's got his teeth out there, racking, and up, racking up some points, and he's holding his Sinclair ZX80, and it says under the picture, Clive Sinclair, inventor of the world's first pocket TV, the pocket calculator, and now the ZX80 personal computer system, began his career in electronics as a technical journal, uh, journalist, and in 1962 began his... Producing radio and amplifier kits. His company has now evolved into the computer manufacturer responsible for the ZX80. So it shows him smiling. Uh, I'll show a little bit of a, a closer up picture. Hopefully the glare is not too bad. And then you'll see some other pictures in the mix. And it looks like a bare naked uh, ZX80 showing the wonderful motherboard. And then some others being manufactured. It looks like being laid out with cords and cables and being put together. So we're going to read his whole page. I'm not going to uh, read too much of the Image Computer Products, Inc. I'm sure the dude was cool in the time, but I don't really know who he is. Uh, so anyway, Sinclair Research Limited first introduced the ZX80 in Britain early in 1980. An improved uh, version began being sold in the U.S. in September. I wonder what the improvement was. Ooh. Uh, soon, an extended basic language ROM and memory expansion box were greatly increased the power of the ZX80 and extend its computing capabilities to support more complex technical and scientific applications. As the power of ZX80 increases, Sinclair will continue to provide accessories and peripherals designed to meet the expanding needs of the ZX80 owners. Clive Sinclair, founder of the company, invented the world's first pocket TV and pocket calculator, blah, 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 in the 1970s. And now the smallest and lowest price expandable personal computer system has been developed by Sinclair. So that's where it ended his page. And then over here, anything of interest about image computer products, images, publishing background 10 years ago. Uh, the strength of the company has been publishing and marketing expertise. Image uh, currently occupies three locations in Chicago with total resources of more than 7,000, 70,000 square feet of production facilities and 80 employees. Image maintains the ability to keep up with exploding microcomputer software marketplace. So they seem to be pimping the software side of things. That was their shtick. So cool. Let's go now. Oh, this is the big page. So this is the page that we were all waiting for, right? And I didn't show you first because I was being a little greedy. <laughs> but the ZX80 personal computer, only $199.95. So it wasn't $99. Uh, which one was $99? Was that the... Maybe that was the Timex Sinclair TS-1000 one that was... Uh, 99 so they well this was two hundred dollars so it wasn't one tenth the price of my atari 800 it was a little bit more money <laughs> one fifth because my atari 800 the computer itself was a thousand dollars basically 999 so we're going to read a lot of this page and then i'll flip through the rest of the stuff and kind of crunch through things but the zx personal computer the sinclair zx80 is an extraordinary personal computer uh, that's one word I always, is it extraordinary or extraordinary? Extraordinary, extraordinary. <laughs> you tell me, how do you say it? I say extraordinary. <laughs> uh, comp compact and briefcase size, it weighs just 12 ounces. You know what's funny? That computer weighs uh, a lot more than the Tenkara fly rods that I sell, or the company I work for sells, that are only 2 ounces. Uh, an 11-foot fly rod, that's only 2 ounces. <laughs> this thing was fat. 12 ounces, <laughs> but it's much smaller than your average ordinary computer. Yet in performance, it matches and surpasses systems many times its size and price. The ZX80 is an advanced example of microelectronics design. Inside, it has one-tenth the number of parts of existing comparable machines. You wait till the uh, ZX81 and Timex uh, uh, TS2068 and all these others come out. They, they got by with even less. Well, the Speccy did for sure. A uh, couple of chips that kind of did everything, right? Uh, let's see, it has one-tenth 
the number of parts and existing comparable machines. This unique design uh, packing the system. I'm going to sneeze. Oh boy. A uh, system in onto fewer more advanced LSI chips gives the ZX80 its remarkable low price. Along with the complete 128 page course in basic programming, the ZX80 comes with all the necessary cords for connecting to a standard color or black and white televisions and cassette recorders. Then it gave the dimensions, the width, uh, 6.85 inches, the depth 8.58 inches, they also have it in millimeters, but here in the United States, uh, many of us still go by inches, uh, and then height is 1.5 inches, and weight 10.5 ounces. Uh, only $199.95. Microprocessor memory, it's a Z80A as an alpha. 3.25 megahertz clock. ROM 4K bytes containing basic RAM 1K internal. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, whew. Uh, basic RAM 1K bytes internal externally expandable to 16K. Now, right off the bat, if I had this Atari brochure at the same time, I'm going... What is this toy? What the hell is this? Uh, uh, 4K? Come on now, the st the stock Atari is 16K by Dab Nabbit. <laughs> um, so yeah, everything. Yeah, I'm so okay. The size is giving me some limitations. I'm starting to think outside the box here. I'm going. It's cute. If I only had $200, this would be it. But I'm a I'm an entrepreneurial kid. I had two paper routes, and within uh, half a year, I could save up or whatever and buy my Atari 800, or get my parents to buy it earlier and pay them back, kind of thing. Uh, so okay, keep reading. Keyboard 40 key touch sensitive membrane with keyboard keyword entry gives an equivalent of 62 keys. And that would have made me go, What's that? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> uh, after entering the statement number, the next key you touch enters the keyword printed above it automatically. I'd go, okay, that makes sense. Okay, touch sensitive. Well, the Atari 400 is touch sensitive. They're bigger keys, but they're still touch sensitive. But, oh, the Atari 800, it's got real keys. Hmm. So again, I started thinking about these things as I was reading. Display requires an ordinary domestic black and white or color TV, same as my Atari. The LED, or lead actually, not LED, a lead supply connects between the Z80 and your TV's antenna leads. The display is 24 lines of 32 characters per line showing black characters on a white screen. Right there I would have read, black characters on a white screen. Wait, this Atari does color! And has more graphic capability so far in my head. Hmm. I can see why this is $199.95. But I'm still reading. <laughs> TV standard. The ZX80 is designed to work with VHF channel 2. Syntax check. The syntax of the entered line is checked character. And then it starts talking about syntax check. I would have glazed over that going, what the hell is a syntax check? I don't care about that. But then it says the word graphics. So, again, I'm kind of reading from this booklet here. Graphics. A total of 22 graphic symbols gives 48 by 64 pixel resolution, consisting of 10 symbols plus space and inverses. 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 <laughs> Include symbols for drawing bar charts under uh, control of your basic program. Any character can be printed in reverse field. Okay, and it's kind of, they're, they're really trying to overcompensate uh, for something, undercompensate for something overcompensate <laughs> one of those editing a powerful editor allows you to edit a line of a program okay i would have uh been reading that and then i would have saw the word rub out and it says the word rub out right there you probably don't see where my everything is rub out i would have said what the hell's a rub out <laughs> rub it rub it rub it this is a frogger game <laughs> arithmetic it started talking about some numbers and i'm i'm not a bright person when it comes to super math so i would have said okay basic plus minus i understand that immediate mode the zx80 will function in the calculator mode oh boy by immediately executing a statement most computers do that and i said okay cool it's a glorified calculator but i could have sold mom and dad on that part saying oh it's a calculator I need it for high school. Uh, yeah, because I was going into high school in 1980, right? Uh, expression evaluator. I would have looked at this sentence and said, go subs for next. What the heck? I don't know what that stuff is. Cassette interface. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense because I made cassette tapes of all my music uh, that I like to record off the radio for free so I could play it back later. So I knew what a cassette interface kind of was. 
The ZX80 works with almost all domestic cassette recorders. The transfer rate is 250 baud. Probably would have been probably one of the first times I saw the word baud. Using a unique tape recording format. Other ZX80s, the ZX80 also has uh, saves variables as well as program cassette uh, data on the cassette. Therefore, you can save the data for updating next time. I would say, okay, cool. And it, it uses a regular generic cassette recorder, which I happen to have owned at the time. I think I owned a Sanyo. Not a lot of people remember the, the name Sanyo. S-A-N-Y-O. Sanyo. They made a lot of electronics. Uh, and um, yeah, I had a Sanyo player. Variables again, and it's talking about a dollar sign, z dollar sign, and I would have went, what the hell is this crap? I'm going to read on. <laughs> power supply, okay, the Z80 requires approximately a certain amount of power, and, and that was it. So that ended, and it said that was going to be 199 So right there, I would have said, what about sound? What about color? What about sound? <laughs> uh, what's this, a Vincent Van Gogh machine? Van Gogh, Van Gogh. Uh, so I... I I started then saying Atari 800 uh, because I was going to save for it. Okay, so that's the end of that. So let's flip through the rest of this, and then we'll come to the conclusion I came to. So page 8, having fun with the ZX80 from Creative Computing, and it looks like they're showing cassettes with all these different games and stuff that I could start buying. So it's a little mini catalog of the software that this Image Computer Products was pimping in the day. I have uh, no idea. Uh, somebody circled this one, 4K Energy ba Integer Basic 1K User Memory. So whoever had this catalog before me, and I think it's the guy who bought it from the original owner on eBay, <coughs> he circled that, saying that was important to him. And he got some asterisk by Strategy Moves. And some other games packs. He put asterisk what he wanted to buy. So that was page 8 and 9. Shows some cassettes. and So I'm still jiving here. I'm not seeing lots of pretty pictures, but I see some cassettes. Not seeing video game pictures yet. Computer Learning Lab for beginners and experts. Now I would have read through this because I was interested in learning how to program. So I would have read through this uh, uh, these pages here. And it would have interested me. Computer Learning Lab Workbook. Okay, cool. Where's the pictures of the programs running? I don't see any of that. They're, they're just magically overlooking that part. Because maybe they didn't want to show the graphic horsepower of the ZX80 at the time. Uh, so, Computer Learning Lab. We'll go past that. Oh, products from Linsac. The ZX80 Companion. Looks like it's a book that they were pimping. And again... Very limited on, and no pictures of programs running yet. <laughs> it's all about this book. Now, I've never seen this book, the ZX80 Companion. Do I own that? <clears throat> what the hell's a Linsac? <laughs> it doesn't sound like a good word. Hey, how's your Linsac doing? Oh, it's doing okay. <laughs> when you get older, you start talking about Linsacs. Okay, so this was an interesting page. I would have read through it and saw some Linsack stuff about this book and some other games, the math processor, but nothing's jumping out. Okay, then I would have saw, oh, and this guy ordered it in 72781, the previous owner. He ordered this book, and I do have it in the back, 30 programs for the Sinclair ZX80. So it looks like the book that I have in my back room, and maybe we'll look at that at some point and key in a, a game together or whatever. Uh, he ordered it on 727, but he typed that out or wrote it out right there. So he liked marking his books. And yeah, I would have probably purchased that book too. <clears throat> then he has the word career written in here, playing against the computer. Career? C-A-R-E-E-R. -E -E Maybe he's going, oh, I'm going to have a career in this. And he has some more asterisks by all these things uh, about programming that he wanted to get into. Oh, now this middle page looks good. 16 and 17. Or not, it may not be the middle page. That was the middle. I don't know where the middle is. But this page would have Rock, uh, rock my socks off a little bit because it did have some pictures uh, of stuff that maybe I would like to buy. Hopefully this is all recording. Uh, how many minutes am I in? Uh, holy smokes, it's 25 minutes. Like I said, these are normally long videos, so unless you grabbed a cuppa and been watching this, you may have been bored by now, but that's okay. Accessories and peripherals. So it has a t-shirt I could buy. Uh, I, I like that. Sinclair Heat Transfers, actually. Be the first person on the block to say ZX80 on your chest. 
uh, to have ZX8, not say, but uh, have it on your chest. So there is one, uh, a, uh, a Sinclair heat transfer that put on your own t-shirt, cheap bastards. They didn't even sell a t-shirt. <laughs> Everything was cheap. No power buttons. Uh, but this is this other company. But they, oh, a transfer. I could do that for pennies on the dollar. Who wants to get an expensive shirt? An image on my ZX80 computer. I have an image on quality cassette programs, shows a tape recorder. It looks like the Toshiba KT1500 was the cassette player recorder for ideal work with the ZX80. That's the one they were pimping here. Extra Sinclair ZX80 operating manuals if you wanted an extra one. Quality program cassettes for writing your own stuff on. Programming mate for the ZX80. The Toshiba, oh, they were pimping a TV too. Programming the Toshiba TX966 black and white TV is the perfect way to get your ZX80 programs. Nine incher, nice free ZX80 schematic. With every order of ten dollars or more from this catalog, you can receive it no charge. A complete detail schematic of the ZX80 computer. Sweet. I wonder if this place is still in business. I want my, my free schematic, damn it. <laughs> okay, so that was a fun page. Now I know this Toshiba, uh, at least this company had a link up with them. So we're actually the, at the end of the book. Perfect. Program authors. So the end of it, um, programming the Sinclair ZX80 author's guide is the last, basically, page of information of any value on the back. And that's it. Uh, we're at the end of the book. So what did you think? TJ goes home and goes, oh, I can buy these computers. Oh, color, sound, games. If I threw it at an intruder coming in the house, he would die because it's heavy. Oh, this one, it's cute and picanto. Uh, maybe the ladies will like it because it's cute and picanto. Uh, oh, but there's no sound. No sound, but I could, that means I could play it wee hours of the night and my parents wouldn't know because there's no sound. But they would see the blaring white light of the white only screen, white and black characters. Uh, so there would be some brightness going on. No colors. Oh no, no colors. The world's in color. Uh, so I, you know, look, we're humans. Uh, I, this Tim Allen uh, movie where he, 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 he hides with the Amish for a little bit. Even during the movie, the Amish men were introduced to clothing of color more than just black and white. And one of the Amish bishops said, um, Ooh, we like the colors. We like the colors. And I like the colors too. So I went Atari 800. You all know that. But that doesn't mean the ZX80 doesn't have its place in history. I was near close to later on in life buying one as they came down in price because they were introducing new computers because I still love the stellar looks of the ZX80. If I could only get $200 total ever in my life, I would have purchased it because I wanted a computer. And thinking over time they would enhance it to where it could have maybe color or maybe sound, which we know sound came along. And color, well, you can buy the Chroma device now to give these things. Well, no, technically you can't on this one. Although, there's a gentleman that is working on a Chroma 80, to my knowledge. And if you watch this video, how's that coming along? <laughs> I want one! I want one! Even for my TS-1000, I want one! So, hopefully you enjoyed this little romp down this catalog. What would have you chosen if you were in the United States? And don't say Commodore, Eric Lamb. I know you're going to say Commodore. Screw the Commodore! No, I would have got a Commodore if I had to. <laughs> I gotta say, the Atari 800 is much prettier than the Commodore. The Commodore, I like bread, but it's a bread box, and, and, and I want to eat my bread. The Atari 800 looks sleek, space age. So did the ZX80. So if you would have said you could have a ZX80 or a Commodore, I would have chose the ZX80. Yeah, I would have. I'm not lying. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Put my glasses back on so I can see my way over to the camera to turn it off. Thanks for watching this video. Next up will be, where did I put them? Will be a Timex TS-1000 romp down the woods. I would have already owned my Atari 800. This would have came out and I would have said, TJ, do I need this new, kind of sleek looking, but not quite as sleek, but it is black, so it looks sexier, not sp as space agey. Do I need to add a T Timex Sinclair 1000 to my arsenal? We'll come back and do another video later on about that. So thanks for watching. Happy weekend to you. And happy um, 
St. Paddy's Day, Paddy's Day, uh, when that comes out in uh, less than a, oh no, in a week from now. So thanks for watching. Bye.